2021 Volunteer Firefighter Graduation Ceremony. This year's graduates are Caleb Alamo, Paul Manetta, Richard LaRose, Evan Akels, Alexander Guptill, Anthony D'Amelio, Dylan Polhill, Matthew Lamb, Connor Charles, Christian Bradley, and Paul La Ladawick. Richard LaRose received the Ted, Ted Lucas Award for Excellency during his training. The Volunteer Firefighter Recruitment Class for the Class of 2022 will be posted in late summer or early fall of this year. On behalf of Council, congratulations to this year's 11 graduates. Thank you Training Captain Mike Pittaway and Fire Chief Terry Dixon for your leadership in running the Volunteer Firefighter Recruitment Program. On behalf of Council, I would also like again to thank Thorold Fire and Emergency Services for providing mutual aid to the devastating Welland House Hotel fire in downtown St. Catharines. We sent our ladder truck to the fire scene and provided backup service to Station 4. As always, a great job done by our crews. Mayor Senzik sends his thanks as well on behalf of the City of St. Catharines. This morning, I had my first meeting virtual with recently hired Ken Chan, Vice President of Administration at Brock University. We discussed partnership opportunities and the importance of community relations. On August 9th, 10th, and 11th, Carmen DeRose will be hosting his 32nd annual soccer camp school at C.E. Gross Soccer Field for children aged 7 to 13. Always a great camp. On Friday, July 16th, we entered step three on the roadmap to reopen. Learn more at ontario.ca backslash reopen. As we safe, safely and cautiously reopen, please continue to follow the public health safety measures and please get vaccinated if you are able to and haven't already done so. Step three focuses on the resumption of additional indoor services with larger numbers of people and restrictions in place. Once again, learn more about these changes under step three and the public health safety measures that you need to follow at ontario.ca backslash reopen. The information and associated links are also available on the City of Thorold and Niagara Region websites and Facebook pages. And that's the end of my mayor's remarks. So next we go on to presentations. And up first, we have Kim Rossi, Director of Philanthropy and PR at Pathdone Foundation. And is Kim here with us? Yes. Kim, welcome to Thorold City Council. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, good to see everybody. You're gonna, we need more volume. Uh, I have lots of volume, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. There we go. I'm going to share my screen with you now and just give you a brief presentation on what's happening at Pathstone, um, how Thorold City Council's walking clinic in Thorold specifically is helping kids in need. Um, I also wanted to mention in your in your good news uh, report, Mr. Mayor, we had a, a major announcement today and. Many people don't know that our school on Merrittville Highway, which is 1604 Merrittville Highway, is actually located in Thorold and not Welland, despite what Google says. Well, it's because uh, uh, it's because of the postal address, but the only reason I didn't mention in my mayor's remarks because I knew you were going to do it. So I, I'd good. rather you do it. So that's outstanding that's news. Excellent. So we, uh, for anyone that may have missed it, uh, we were uh, proud to announce a lifetime impact gift from Mark Bethano, the president of Mountain View Homes today, Mountain View Building Group. And what it's doing is uh, funding inside projects that had to be done at that school, as well as an entire outdoor renovation that will include play and learning hubs that also include two outdoor classrooms. So we look forward to uh, sending invitations out to council toward the end of August to invite you to this outdoor event and tour and unveiling as the school will now be known as the Mountain View Innovative Center, or sorry, Mountain View Center for Innovative Learning. Awesome. So happy news. to share that with you. 
Um, okay, so without further ado, I will uh, share my screen and we'll we'll get right into it. Happy to answer any of your questions um, at any time. Probably easiest with this format to to facilitate that at the end if it's okay. Okay. So, are you seeing? Okay, perfect. I'm 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 assuming everybody's seeing the 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 title screen here. Yeah, it's all there. Great. Excellent. Okay, so we're just going to talk about our model of care as we move through the pandemic uh, and beyond. We know that this model of care, we will continue to adapt as we go, but we're looking ahead to the next two to three years at Pathstone. So just some uh, very simple, basic facts about, about Pathstone uh, for anyone that's not as familiar. I know some counselors um, are quite. Uh, one in five children and youth will be affected by a mental health issue. Those numbers have not changed in some time. Um, I'd be really interested to see what that update, up that what that updated number may be uh, post pandemic. And what we do know is 70% of mental health challenges have their onset in childhood or adolescence. They may not surface until adulthood, but typically that's where the issue stems. Uh, Canada's youth suicide rate is actually the third highest in the industrialized world. Every every day we lose 10 people in Canada uh, at the hands of suicide and it has increased overall 400% globally through the pandemic. So some of the challenges, not only Pathstone sees, the entire province of Ontario sees, is that parents and, and caregivers are looking for help for children and youth, but only four in every 10 actually receive it. And there's a number of reasons. Uh, it could be that they're not aware of the resources. It could be that there is extensive wait lists at Pathstone, we currently have a wait list, and I'll get into that a little later. Uh, at the time, uh, before the pandemic, we were actually one of the only uh, mental, children's mental health providers in, in Ontario that had a very minimal wait list and only for a few programs. Uh, we were way below the Ontario average. So we are a mental health agency for children. We support children, youth, and their families from the start of their life until their 18th birthday. And we have 17 different programs at Pathstone. A lot of people don't know that we were running an elementary school on Merrittville Highway from, for, for students in grades one through eight, as well as a live-in treatment center in Niagara Falls that we call Rotary House. Uh, so we also are in daycares across the region, schools, both elementary and high school. Uh, and we have eight in-person walk-in clinics across the Niagara region, of which Thorold Public Library is the proud host of one of them. Our overall goal and mission is to strengthen the quality of life for children, youth, and families in Niagara that are struggling with mental health challenges. And we want to ensure that no child's waiting more than 30 days for a mental health treatment program. So walk-in clinic or our crisis and support line or video counseling services are all immediate. There's no delay, no wait. Uh, but when we talk about this 30 day uh, wait time, we're talking about entry into a uh, full treatment program at Pathstone, which comes after walk-in clinic, which comes after a call to the crisis and support line if they're referred for further services. So just to let you know, we served almost 10,000 children over the last 12 months, and that was a 35% increase from the year previous. And we know that most of this is heavy in pandemic related issues. Uh, nearly 2,000 clients came to Pathstone through our immediate services program. So we define that as immediate access. So crisis and support line, the walk-in clinic, either in person or via video. Currently, what we're looking at is a wait for our brief services program. And that wait list actually continues to grow. In April, it was just under 200. As we got into May, it crept over 200. And here we are in July and we're sitting at 241 children that are waiting anywhere from eight to 12 weeks to get into brief services. And pre-pandemic, we did not have any wait time or wait list for our brief services program. Brief services is best defined as six sessions or less of mental health support. So typically if a child or family comes to our walk-in clinic and they have a one-on-one -on -one session, lasts about an hour, they may be referred to brief services for some further support because as I mentioned, it, it offers up to six additional sessions. And we're really getting at the mental health issue at its onset. And it's a really crucial and important time. Um, at, at one point, our brief services program was the most effective and immediate uh, and impactful program that we had running. So this delay is not good news for us. The problem we're having now is if kids are waiting eight to 12 weeks to get six sessions or less, 
we're worried that their issues may worsen by the time we get to them. Um, so I kind of briefly went over what our immediate services program is. It's, it's a three-prong approach. Uh, it's a crisis and support line, which is accessible 24-7 at the 1-800 number that you see highlighted on the screen. Um, there's also access to our walk-in clinic via video because of the pandemic, and we are keeping that platform well after the pandemic ends, as well as our in-person walk-in clinics, which reopened the first week of July. So we're happy that they are back up and running. As always, our walk-in clinics, whether you access them via video or in person, as well as our crisis and support line, has no cost, no referral needed, no OIP card is required. We do ask that they call the crisis and support line to make an appointment just because of COVID uh, issues, restrictions, and we want to keep uh, people at minimum. And it also saves everybody time that you're not waiting around for a walk-in clinic session. You can get same-day appointments. So if you call in the morning, you could be seeing somebody at by you know, 11 o'clock. Uh, in person or via video. So where are our, our clinics located? Of course, you know the one in Thorold, but we also have a five-day walk-in clinic in St. Catharines, a one-day in Beamsville, Grimsby, Port Colborne, Fort Erie, Welland, Niagara Falls. Um, I'm happy to tell you that we are looking at a ninth walk-in clinic to open in September, which we are really excited about. It just gives us more reach across the region. Um, so with in-person walk-in clinics, video counseling, uh, combined, we're looking at over 800 in-person and video counseling hours available each month from Pathstone to anyone who needs us. So uh, the crisis and support line has never been busier, of course, through the pandemic. You can expect that we had a flood of calls, especially when schools were closing for the first time. We had stay-at-home orders for the first time. We were all really in the same boat for quite uh, for, for quite a few months. I remember when the first uh, state, when the pandemic was issued, uh, we thought, is this three or four weeks? And I'm sure you were all kind of in the same boat and we kind of figured it out as we went. Initially, when the pandemic started, we didn't see that increase in calls, but the longer it continued, uh, people really started to struggle with the restrictions that, that were placed on, uh, on them. So what kids are telling our team when they come in to see us, uh, COVID-19 is the center of a lot of mental health issues. Uh, we've seen a lot of anxiety, depression, and self-harm. Uh, more recently, eating disorders. We received 65 eating disorder cases in a 30-day span. Uh, we're looking at an eating disorder caseload of 90% over last year. And eating disorders uh, for teens are, are more about, it, it's a serious mental health issue, but I, which I don't think a lot of people realize they think it's about food. And really it's um, an opportunity to gain control at a time when there isn't any. And if the pandemic isn't that perfect storm, I don't know what might be. Anxiety cases were huge among six to 10 year old children. Uh, their fears were of someone getting sick and passing from COVID. Uh, they missed their school friends. They missed school in general. That lack of socialization is really important for six to 10 year olds. What the teenagers didn't experience at the same level as those younger kids uh, was made up through their social media connections. So when you're looking at six to 10 year olds, you're not seeing the same social media engagement with friends as you do among teens. So their friends and their circle was at school. So when that was eliminated, uh, they really struggled with that. And at that age too, they're also learning things like social cues and how to share. And, and how to collaborate with others. And so a lot of those teachable moments and those kinds of other skills that you learn in school were also lost at that time. Uh, depression cases were related to a lack of uh, social connection for many, and for many, and you would see that in the teens. You had some that didn't wanna leave the house because they didn't feel safe. And you had others that were rebelling against the rules just to be able to see friends. So their parents had struggles on both ends. And then of course we know the uh, complication of having to do at-home learning, online learning, working from home. Uh, it was a lot for many people to, to take. And if there was already a mental health issue present, uh, that struggle became even more prominent in many cases. So some of these kids, of course, are from Thorold. So 585 one-on-one -on -one clinical hours were spent supporting kids from Thorold over a 12-month span. That did not include our walking clinic because we had a closure for most of the time. Um, so those were either calls or programs directly where uh, Thorold youth are enrolled. 
we have another 12 kids from Thorold on our wait list right now. So that 241 number, 12 of which are, are from Thorold. Now that number was updated probably about a month ago. I'm you know hoping it hasn't changed much since then, but you can probably bank on 12 to 15. Um, so we do estimate that yeah, numbers of kids that we're seeing would have been higher if in-person clinics were have to remained open through the pandemic. It was a really delicate dance we had. We were able to keep the St. Catharines walk-in clinic open a little longer because it was in our own building. But when we were leaning on other um, municipalities for their space, for example, your library, the Fleming Center in Beamsville, we had to kind of follow along with what they were doing in that building and with their staff. So as mentioned off the top, our, pro, our problem is growing. Um, the wait list was under 200 in April and now we're looking at almost 250. And before COVID, we didn't have a wait list for this program. Our concern, as I highlighted off the top, is that by the time kids are called for brief services, their issues may have worsened or become more complex, which would mean that they would need, need longer therapy. Uh, moderate therapy is defined as six to 25 sessions of mental health support, and it's not necessary. Uh, kids shouldn't be waiting for mental health support, and for us, this isn't okay. So what we need to do next? We need to continue to support the in-person walk-in clinics, which reopened the week of July 5th. And the reason we need to do that is because it is our best defense in tackling mental health issues at the onset. As soon as kids are ready to talk, we're right there. And if we need to refer them for further support, this is where our struggle is, but we're also remedying that. We're in the process of remedying that as well. Uh, we are appealing to community, individuals, corporations, foundations to support our brief services program, which would entail hiring additional people to be able to take on brief services cases. Each staff member that works in brief services, and I'll tell you that they're a level two social worker, takes on a caseload of 50 to 60 cases at a time. So they are constantly running with 50 to 60 cases. Because it's a shorter term program, they're able to do it. Um, but if you do the basic math, we have 241 on the list. We need to hire about three therapists at this point to be able to not only work off that wait list, but prevent that wait list from growing. That's our wait list. We work with Contact Niagara, if you're not familiar. Uh, they, were, they are another referral point. And every six to eight weeks, we get another stack of cases that are referred to us from them. So that is our wait list sitting at 241, but every six to eight weeks, we do get an increase in cases from Contact Niagara. So we do have a solution. It's a slow moving solution and we know that. We feel that this is gonna be a project we're gonna to have to work on and work off of for the next two to three years. We really haven't seen the full impact of the pandemic effects just yet, um, but this is our solution and we just need the community to remain at the table with us. So our overall goal is sticking, which is no child waiting more than 30 days for mental health support. Happy to keep talking with you tonight or one-on-one -on -one if you like. My email is on the screen as well as my direct line at the office. And at this point I can stop sharing the screen and take questions if you have them. Thank you, Kim, for your presentation. Questions, I have Councillor DeRose, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Kim, very informative presentation. And uh, as a counselor, I would do anything in my power, and I'm sure the rest of our council will uh, will uh, support that statement to uh, make this, uh, as you said, in helping your, your solution and, and working to get these kids taken care of. I, I know I've, I've been teaching for almost 30 years in elementary school, and the value you guys offer to the community is, uh, it, it can't be measured. Um, now, I just wanted to ask you one thing. Kim, what, what is the main source of funding for Pathstones? So the Ministry of Health takes care of the majority of our funding. The foundation fundraises 7% uh, of our annual funding. So I'll tell you that all the walk-in clinic programs, the video counseling program, and the wellness wall program, which you will see in all schools across Niagara, elementary and high school come September, are all fully funded by the foundation. Those programs wouldn't exist without our foundation. So Ministry of Health funding was covering what we were looking like three years ago and the foundation's been able to fundraise enough through support from councils um, and foundations and individuals and corporations to be able to add these additional programs to, uh, to our roster. Thank you, Kim. So Kim, what can we do as a council? Just wait for, to be reached out from you guys? Like what can we, is there anything else we can do as a council to help support you at this point? 
Well, yeah, a absolutely. So I, I can always send materials that can be posted at all of your uh, city buildings or town uh, uh, town buildings at, at any point, whether it's you know arenas or rec centers, uh, what have you. Even at uh, at city hall, you can you can totally you know do that. We've got posters we can send out about our walking clinic, how to access immediate services. There's a QR code to scan to get directly connected with us. So that would be helpful and, and happy to send that out. That would be great, Kim. If you could send that to our clerk's office, we'll make sure that stuff gets distributed, absolutely. Thank, thank you, Kim, and please say hi to your mom for me. <laughs> I will, I will for sure. Thank Counselor, you. Counselor Sentence. Councillor Sentence, do you hear me? You're you're muted. There you go. Am I not muted now? You're good now. Okay, sorry. I don't know what happened. Hi, Kim. Uh, nice to see you again. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was a great presentation. I love what you do for kids. Uh, we all appreciate it. Um, just a couple questions for you. So the Thorough Branch, so anybody listening, is open now for walk-in. Okay, excellent. I just wanted everyone to know that, that they can uh, get there if they have to. Mm -hmm. um, and my other question is, as you know, as, as a council, we have, uh, we have asked the province and the feds for more funding and more attention to this crisis. Mm -hmm. um, from your end, are you seeing any movement? You talked to Councillor DeRose about your funding, but I think it needs more. We all think it needs more. Are you seeing anything from those two entities? that are saying, yeah, we, we have to address this problem? Uh, yeah, we are seeing uh, some movement. Uh, very good question. So from uh, mm -hmm. a provincial standpoint, yes, they've increased our base funding. Um, I will confess that our base funding was way out of line with the, just the natural rate of inflation. Uh, so this is the first increase to base funding we've seen in almost a decade. So that's going to help for sure. Uh, I'm also in conversations um, with Vance Badaway, uh, MP, of course, uh, to talk to him about how the federal government can get on board with, um, they, you know, they're, they're really great at making announcements and distributing funds to the province to then distribute to us, but it's not always reaching us. Uh, right. So some of the programs that they thought were actually going to, you know, help mental health really went to other things like infrastructure. Okay. So we're working together and have been for the last few months, uh, back and forth and, and conversations as well. We're also in touch often with um, Minister Tobolo, who is an, uh, not a sitting MPP. His, his, he is mental health and addictions, but he's a representative for the province uh, in, that, in that realm. So there's active conversations happening. They're quite aware of what's going on here. Um, it's just whether or not they are going to be able to respond in the way that we find meaningful. From a federal right. government standpoint, I, you know, we, when I talked to, to Vance about it, I said, you know, I have no problem showing you impact for, for contribution. And if the province isn't giving that to you, well, then maybe you need to come straight to us so that we can give you that impact and show right. you what, what the money is doing. So we're talking. We're definitely, the conversation continues. Good to hear. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Uh, sure. Councillor Neal. Thank you very much. And good to see you, Kim. Uh, and I'm on the library board, so... We're glad to have you there. And if you need any more time, uh, yeah, probably staffing is more the, the, the challenge than time. But uh, if you need more space uh, at the library, then please contact us and we'd be glad to, to help out in any way we can. A, a question though is uh, when the students go back to school and, and Councillor Groves get back to, to teaching what he loves doing, uh, will that help? the situation as far as the stress and issues that are there through the, the mental health? It's a great question. Um, first off, the, the World Public Library was so helpful in getting us up and running in that space, uh, making it comfortable and warm. Would they repaint it? We, there was furniture brought in. It, it's really a, a, quite a great space to have one-on-one -on -one time. Um, and I should also mention, any of our walk-in clinics across the region are open to anybody and everybody, uh, 18 and under. So you don't have to live in Thorold uh, to go to the walk-in clinic in Niagara Falls if, if that happens to work for, for students or, or for children. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, 
to, to talk to your point with regards to what the school year will look like, we actually are expecting, we anticipate that we are going to get crushed with demand in September and October. And there's a couple of reasons why, but the most glaring or the most obvious would probably be uh, the fact that kids were out of school for so long and now they may be anxious, apprehensive about going back. There's some children that started their school education at home. They don't even know what school really is yet. So we, we do anticipate seeing some struggles there. We always have an increase in September, October, as it is. Summer is a free for all. There's really no schedules, bedtimes. It's, you know, we have looser, looser uh, rules at home. As soon as school comes and the pressure of school and schedules and restrictions and that sort of thing, kids get amped up. Uh, add to it the, the change in scenery with going back to school. Uh, we're expecting a higher demand. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Decker, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Kim. That was a great presentation. And I agree that uh, the mental health needs more funding. And I'm so happy that we have the um, uh, clinic here in Thorold. I guess my concern is the waiting list. And I know there's waiting lists uh, for everything, but the 30 day waiting list for these kids. Are there any other outlets for them while they're waiting or is there an outreach program to you know does somebody reach out to them are there volunteers that are like you know getting in touch with them because i think that's where the problem lies is the waiting and, and i know that from my personal experience um you know having a family member that's like going through uh, some issues and it's the waiting and not being able to have anybody contact you or anyone to talk to. So how, how's that work? Right, so whenever uh, we get into the, the scenario of someone having to be put on our wait list, I usually recommend, and I know our counselors do as well, to, to use the crisis and support line. Uh, they're really great at spending the time on the phone with you or through video or walking clinic. Uh, walking clinic can be a great help to kind of give you some support tools, um, coping mechanisms, that sort of, even just an ear. Um, a lot of times kids want to be heard, validated. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear you, I understand, I, I, I feel what you're feeling. So I, I, would, I would say that that would probably be the, you know, the, the avenue that I would suggest. And if the, if the wait list, uh, Councillor Decker, was 30 days, I would, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We're actually almost right. 12 weeks. So I, you know, ideally we'd love to get it to 30 days or less. It is really the only program that has a wait list. The rest are, are working just fine. Um, the contact Niagara backlog is, is a little uh, problematic for us too, but we really only have control over what we have control over. But I would say, uh, and the other, the other part of it is um, on our website, pathstonementalhealth.ca, we have a platform called Pathstone TV and it offers all kinds of helpful videos on the difference between stress and anxiety, uh, about resiliency, about meditation, uh, mindfulness. There's all kinds of uh, helpful videos that run three to five minutes in length uh, that parents and uh, teens might find helpful. Yeah, that's great, Kim, thanks. And I think that's a great idea to get some pamphlets out in all our public areas that we have around the area so that people know that these facilities are available to them. So thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you, is there any further questions? Go ahead, Councillor DeRose. Through Mr. Mayor, just one last question. Kim, have, they, have you guys ever considered um, having the walk-ins read right at a school? In a, in having a, set, a part of the school designated for that, a room or an area? Mm -hmm. is that, is that, will, will that stigmatize it too much or? Not necessarily, but we have talked to the schools. Um, I don't know about your school, but there's never a lot of free space available on a consistent basis. Uh, we have had those conversations before. What we have done uh, for this coming September, we've created uh, back to school posters for both school boards. Uh, they are they have, are being printed and distributed, so you will have them up in your elementary and high schools. The Wellness Wall program is there with more information on how to access our uh, services, as well as give them some mental health support on those wellness walls. Um, so we're anticipating you know the demand for sure and we want to make sure that we're reachable and i think a lot of kids you're right there there could be some uh stigmatization although i hear kids talking about their anxiety and their depression and that they go to pathstone very openly they are not the kids of you know 15 20 years ago 
um, they are okay talking about it. Uh, so I'm, I'm not as concerned about that anymore. And, and if anything, through this pandemic, if we have to find a bright spot, it's that if you've never had a mental health issue, you were probably rattled at some point throughout this pandemic. And so now maybe you get it a little more. Uh, so the empathy is there too with, with uh, regards to mental health issues and support. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Kim, I wanna thank you for coming to council for, and the presentation was outstanding and it's really eye-opening. Um, I want to uh, say that any materials you have, if you give uh, through the clerk's office, we'll make sure they get distributed and, and put on our uh, social media page. And as well, um, we look forward to um, going to the uh, school on Merrittville Highway and mm -hmm. congratulations on the, and I'd like to thank Mountain View Homes uh, on the sponsorship arrangement, uh, the donation to that school. And uh, we look forward uh, to coming out and visiting and seeing the new facility or the outdoor amenities that you're adding there uh, when they're completed. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Council. Okay, up next, we have um, another presentation from um, Anthony Fiore. Anthony, is he with us? Yes. Anthony. Welcome to Thorold City Council, Anthony. Thank you for having me. And we look forward to your presentation, and you're up, so go ahead. Okay. Um, so believe it or not, I'm not the best with technology, um, so I'm going to do this as best as I can, and hopefully we can get this done. Hang on one second here. Can everyone see the start of the slideshow yes, and everything? Yes, we can, yeah. Yes. We're good to go? We're yes, good Anthony. to go. Okay, so um, before I start formality, I wanna thank everybody for uh, allowing me to present this. Uh, Mary Galini, counselors, thank you very much for your time. Um, honestly, let just get in right off the bat. This was something that I've been toying with for probably a year, uh, the pandemic happened. Uh, and then it kind of just went into the back of my mind. Uh, and I felt that now that we're seeing some evolution with getting back to normal and everything. And, uh, you know, we had finished the downtown uh, revitalization plan. It looks beautiful. And now we're working on uh, revitalizing and renovating Beaver Dams Park. I thought, okay, this could be the perfect time to pitch this uh, little community pride crosswalk. And one of the reasons is, is because um, you're going to hear me say this word a lot is visibility. Visibility is key um, in the fight for equality and the fight for diversity and, and inclusion. And I think it's time Thorold joined uh, now the three municipalities across Niagara uh, in installing a pride crosswalk to show our city's commitment to uh, diversity and uh, inclusion. So talk a little bit about what we're achieving by doing this. Um, and it is about creating more, a, a more of a diverse and inclusive community here. Um, every single one of us on this call knows this. Thorold is no stranger to multiculturalism or diversity. Um, my great grandparents were among the first uh, Italian people to settle here in the city. Um, well, growing up, the Feast of St. Anthony, Canada Day celebrations, etc. we were all a part of that. That we're no stranger already in our community to multiculturalism or diversity want to focus on building and supporting strong and inclusive neighborhoods in our community um, because the fact of the matter is people who identify as lgbtq2 plus we exist we're here we live in the community we contribute to the economy we are small business owners entrepreneurs we work in the public sector we work in the private sector we're here um, and mainly uh, it's a symbol of recognition and visibility. Growing up uh, in our community um, from a young age and going through the changes uh, and sort of the, the courage and acceptance of oneself, um, there wasn't really a lot of that when I was growing up. And um, I, I went through a battle with myself at the risk of, of telling such an elongated story, but I went through a battle with myself of when the proper time would have been or what would be the most appropriate time to do it. And there was no visibility in the community. Um, not to say that the support wasn't there, but that's the whole purpose of this is to show that there is visibility there. 
the city is going to act as an ally and it will be supportive in promoting that. A um, bit about the location, uh, you can kind of see the rendering in the, uh, the top right corner. That was the best one uh, out of all the renders that uh, I, we had put together. Um, a lovely gentleman helped me put this together uh, with the graphics because I don't do graphics. Um, my preferred location would be the intersection that connects the Thorough Community Credit Union to the Moose and Goose. Um, there's also Claremont and Paul DeVita Senior Way, which is what we're looking at in that picture, or Sullivan Avenue and Paul DeVita Senior. So um, really nice spot. It's, it's not so much the gateway to the downtown, but it's there, it exists, it's colorful, it's vibrant. Um, it's going to go wonderful with the revitalization and uh, the renovations to Beaver Dams Park. A um, bit, of, bit of vibrancy accents the downtown renovation very well and i think it, i think it's going to be a wonderful addition to uh the downtown uh, core there sort of the meaning behind the location um because i was toying with it myself uh the moose and goose has been a gracious host uh, for many events for pride niagara um and uh, i've been to uh, many events there that they've hosted um like i mentioned it's the entrance to our beautifully renovated downtown um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's the vibrancy, like just look at what nice color that that adds, but most importantly, it's visibility, it's visibility to residents, because I know many people that utilize the businesses in the downtown area. Um, it's visibility to newcomers. I know we have many Brock students that I'm sure are going to be returning in September. Um, some of which I'm sure identify uh, within our community, um, and tourism. Tourism actually is going to play a part in, pan in, in the um, pandemic recovery. I know that that's going to be a big part. And we do have tourists that come here. They come to our small town. Three years ago, I met a couple from New York State at uh, Karma Chameleon uh, who literally pride themselves in finding <clears throat> small towns like Thorold, uh, not just in the States, but in Canada. Um, so I think that, uh, I think that that's, that's a, a great welcome tool uh, and a great visibility tool for the location. So old versus new, you're probably looking at this flag and uh, it's not the traditional flag. So I'll tell you why this is the one that I'm sort of um, pushing to be painted if it is approved. Uh, one of the reasons is, as you can see the in the top right corner, the traditional pride flag, we're all used to those rainbow colors. It is the one that is frequently flown. Um, you did see the city of St. Catharines fly the one that is below, which we're calling the Progress Pride flag. Um, and the addition to those colors uh, represents some, uh, some very interesting points. So the white, pink, and baby blue is representing the transgendered community, which is a large part of our community within the LGBTQ2 plus community. The support, the black and brown stripes, which are representing people of color. Um, and additionally, people living with HIV AIDS uh, and ending that stigma. It's only been four decades since the first case of HIV um, in North America. I'm sure you all remember what happened with that epidemic. We are coming out of a pandemic that has affected all of our lives. So um, most importantly, that flag, because it's showing the making of societal progress visible. Um, and that's the, and that, that for me is something that uh, I think would be well it's more colorful it's more nice and we want to show and be as progressive as possible with this uh with this um this crosswalk here's another bird's eye view rendering that we pulled off of google earth just to kind of give you an idea so you'll see the far right of the uh, the far bottom right is is the moose and goose uh to the um uh left bottom is uh the thorold community credit union uh I'm also open to suggestions on other locations as well. Uh, there's another just quick little rendering that we put together. That would be my preferred location um, as to where it would go. Uh, and you know, just uh, just a couple of things that uh, I, I'd like us to um, you know sort of consider here, uh, because I know that there's a question that I always get uh, when I talk about visibility, when I talk about um, recognition of our community. Here's just a couple of things I'd like to go over with everybody uh, from a statistics standpoint. So same-sex marriage uh, has been legal in our country for 16 years. Um, and for someone like me, it might feel like more of an eternity because uh, as a 15-year-old young male, um, it, 
and the announcements that occurred in 2005 by, uh, by Prime Minister Paul Martin when the law and the bill was passed, um, it's almost like it's, it's yet, it, it, for me it feels like it's yesterday, but it's just amazing to see how much time has passed. But in the grand scheme of things, 16 years is not a long time. In the United States, it's been six years since same-sex marriage became the law of the land. They're our closest neighbor, our closest trading partner, um, and President Barack Obama made it the law of the land in 2015. It was right before Independence Day. I remember celebrating that at Pride, um, and that's only been six years. Uh, Same-sex marriage uh, is only legal in 29 out of 105 countries in the world, just under 15 percent. Um, the, the motherland, Italy, same-sex marriage is not even recognized in Italy. It's a civil union that's recognized. So they don't even recognize same-sex marriage, and that's probably one of the most traveled countries in the world by not just uh, Canadian tourists, but tourists around the world. Transgendered people uh, have an average life expectancy of 30 to 35 years and lower if they are a transgendered person of color. Um, LGBTQ2 plus members are five times more likely to attempt suicide before the age of 25. Um, and if you feel that that statistic is stretched out, uh, I know seven people that have attempted suicide and six of them are still alive. So I guess my next thing to say is we need you. Thorold, we need you. We are the fastest growing municipality in Niagara and arguably the province. Uh, I am a realtor here. I look at the stats. We're building fast, we're expanding fast. We're welcoming people from all stripes, all identities, all cultures into this community. Um, and this is the perfect time in this period of growth to show not just newcomers, but the community within that we are going to be an ally in the fight for equality and inclusivity, promoting that through this lovely gesture and symbolism. Um, it's, it's something that is near and dear to my heart, but it's not for me. The crosswalk is not for me. Um, it's been little over a decade since I came out of the closet. There was no visibility when I did. A lot of us, um, including most of my friends that are from the Niagara region and Thorold that still live in Toronto, um, haven't gotten a chance to come back to the community to see the changes and the evolution that's happened here. And this is just one more step for us uh, to show that we are going to be promoting that and we are going to be on the side of progress. So just a quick little presentation from myself. If, if, if anybody wants, to, I, can, I can be more than happy to share um, some of the renderings uh, with you that we did. Um, and I would be more than happy to take any questions about uh, the proposal. Okay, before I open the floor up to questions, I will tell you that we did fly the new pride flag this year, Anthony. That's at, wonderful. At, at Thank City, you very much. City Hall. Um, is there any questions <laughs> for Anthony? Go ahead, Councillor Neal. Thank you very much. Good evening, Anthony. And like most of us here, I, I've known your, fa your family all my life, basically. I even worked with one of them at the Bank of Commerce in downtown Thorpe. Uh, my question, uh, and I noticed on your on the diagram that you put forward and the other diagram, uh, two separate uh, ways uh, from the moose and goose. And I guess just my my suggestion is that uh, the one from the moose and goose over to the Royal Bank building is probably more more in line with people seeing it than the other one that you talk about from from the moose and goose over to the credit union it's just just my my thoughts uh, uh, it doesn't matter which which one I, i'm glad to do either one uh but um and just as just as an aside i i was in the accounting field for a long long time and mm -hmm. i looked after three sets of uh, people uh over my years and they were fantastic and uh, I was glad to have them as friends. So, so just, just as an aside. Thank you. Councillor Sentence. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Anthony, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was fantastic. Um, uh, I will support this. Uh, I think we can all get, all get a little better at inclusion and acceptance. So um, I, I will uh, support this. I, I saw, so in the in in the flag or the presentation that you made the, the the new look, I really like that idea. Is that something that's going forward in the community? Is it is it just your idea, or uh, I think it uh, I, I thought it was really good. 
Well, when I saw St. Catharines adopted, well, thank you for the thank you for that and for your support. I really appreciate it. When I saw St. Catharines adopt that and, and paint that as their crosswalk, um, I, I thought th th this this is the future. This is the future of the flag. Um, I, I, I the best reference I can give us um, is is downtown Toronto where I used to live at Church and Wellesley. We all know it's home. Uh, it's you can call it the gay village. We still call it the gay village. Um, they have about I would say there's well, yeah. So they have they have different sets of crosswalks. So they have the traditional rainbow flag one, and then they have um, crosswalks devoted specifically to the transgendered flag. Um, I mean, for me, I love the look. I think it's more vibrant, um, and I think that uh, it 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 goes to show just much more inclusive and diverse right. our community is becoming right well done thank you my pleasure Councillor decker thank you mr mayor did you call me you're up okay thank you anthony thanks for your presentation very well done um i i will support it as well i think it's great that we're showing um you know diversity and um you know, and, and we should be proud of, uh, we should be proud to do um, things like this. And I agree with Councillor uh, Neil. I love the idea of it going from uh, Moose and Goose to the Royal Bank. It's very visible and uh, something that we should be very proud of. And whatever I, whatever I can do and Council can do to support you, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but uh, yes, I <laughs> will support. Uh, I will support you in this uh, initiative. So thank you very much. My pleasure and uh, thank you for your support. And uh, I had a feeling once that rendering came so perfect that everybody was gonna want it to go that way. Uh, so that's why I chose it as the main one uh, for the presentation, so thank you. And that's the one Enzo brought for us to fly this year. So uh, at City Hall was that rendition. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome job, thank you. And, and thank you for flying it and showing your support. Okay, that was, uh, uh, go ahead, Councillor Longo. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to uh, Mr. Fior. Anthony, great presentation. Uh, certainly will support your cause. I do have some questions, though, from a, I have to do my counselor job. So is there any proposal on how this will be funded and maintained? Or uh, is it the council to decide? So right now, um, I, uh, I, I, was, I was prepared for that question and I really appreciate that question because it does matter. There is costs involved. There is gonna be maintenance involved. Um, so what, what I would, uh, the initial point of this presentation was just to see if there was an appetite for it, which obviously um, the, the comments that I've heard, obviously we can't speak for everybody that there is going to be support for it. Uh, once it went through the channels and it reached the approval, um, then I mean, I was going to leave that up to your uh, council, mayor, and the city's office to find out a cost, figure out location, etc. Um, what I what I can say uh, about that is the research that I've done uh, from a cost perspective. There is a special paint that you're supposed to use. I believe it's called thermoplasty paint. You don't want to use regular road paint for this because what ends up happening is well, you know, we paint a road. You have a couple of seasons go through it snow, sleet, yada, yada, and then it fades and then it looks terrible. That's the mistake the city of Toronto made was they use regular road paint. And after a year of people traipsing through it, it was over and the mate and, and that actually does end up increasing the maintenance costs. I think if we go state of the art, we use the thermoplasty paint, the paint that keeps it vibrant and colorful. Um, the last quote that I read for it was $175 per square meter. I don't know the exact dimensions of the crosswalks itself. Um, but uh, what I can tell you is that 35 meters square in the city of St. Catharines was originally quoted between six and seven thousand uh, dollars, and the one recently in Port Colborne was quoted at fifteen thousand. That does sound like a big number. I do realize that, but if it does help initially um, address the cost that may seem high, um, I do have a letter in my inbox. It was forwarded to the city clerk by the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority that they will be willing to contribute financially to this project. Okay, so tonight, are you looking for us to maybe consider a staff report to come back with some recommendations, some costing, so we can do our job? That's absolutely what I'm looking for. Uh, this does not have to get painted tomorrow. Um, as I've mentioned to a few uh, councillors who were gracious enough to reach out to me today and 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 in the latter part of the last week, um, I understand that there's channels, there's protocols, and and I'll make this suggestion to council myself. Pride Month is June. It's July, 
Um, maybe I should have pitched this a few months ago. Um, however, if we want to put this into the 2022 budget, if we want to extend that and do this as a ceremony or something for next year, I'm open to those suggestions as well by council. This doesn't have to be something that happens next week. Um, support and approval and going through the channels, I'm, I'm extremely happy with whatever protocol we have to take. Thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. And just one other comment, if I could, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, go um, ahead, Councilor. I'm not sure, Anthony, if you're set on the location or if you're open to other suggestions. Absolutely open to any suggestions and locations. Uh, that the meaning behind that location, I felt, uh, I felt that that location itself, because of the um, because of the moose and goose, and I know that Pride Niagara does host events there. I've been to many myself, and uh, it's a place that uh, you know we go to and we frequent, and people and and people attend. That's why I felt that that location was the most appropriate. Um, however, I'm open to suggestions. I'm, I'm a team player. If anybody wants to make any suggestions, I'm more than willing to, to listen to them. Okay, well, thank you for that uh, offer. I'll make one now. Okay. And I don't expect you to accept it, but I'll maybe consider it. Okay. Um, maybe, uh, maybe on the, uh, the intersection of Merrickville Highway and uh, Sir Isaac Brock Parkway uh, that connects the city of Thorold, the city of St. Catharines, and Brock University. Um, it's highly visible um it's high traffic area and again just a consideration i know maybe set on the down, downtown core and that would be fine with me too but uh, uh i just had a conversation with somebody and they threw that out there so i thought i would throw it out to you can i be honest i'm happy you did because i didn't even think about it and uh, i yeah. think uh we're looking at uh, cooperation between communities and different uh entities and this would be a good way to show that so um Again, I'll just leave that with you. 100%, and uh, that's why these conversations are important because I, I completely overlooked that location and, and, uh, and it's not something that I'm, I'm opposed to right this instant and uh, it, the wheels in my head are gonna start turning for sure. Okay, thank you very much. And, Go and ahead, Mr. Mayor, if everybody's Senton. done, I would recommend staff come back with a report on this. Yeah, I think I, that's what Councillor Sentence uh, was gonna, Councillor Sentence, did you wanna move that and I can get Councillor Longo to second it? Hello, go ahead. Well, I think Councillor DeRose had a question first. You want to go ahead, Councillor DeRose. Sorry, I didn't see it because it's all dark there. Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Anthony, great presentation. Uh, as one of your forum teachers, very proud of you and thank you for bearing your soul with us. Um, and uh, I, I will support the, uh, the endeavor. As you know, as, as one of your teachers, I always was pro diversity, inclusion and equality. And uh, my, my only, and I'm happy to hear that you started to look at private funding and uh, maybe we can pursue that even more. That would be great, but uh, thanks for coming on tonight. Appreciate it. My, uh, my, my pleasure and uh, thanks for your support. And uh, yeah. Okay, Councillor Sentence. Oh wait, yeah, I'm sorry, it, uh, I got Councillor Kenny. Councillor uh, Kenny, go ahead. Council wait, Councillor can Kenny, you? I got Councillor Kenny now. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Councillor Kenny. Yes, um, um, I, I actually called Anthony and told him I supported uh, what he was doing here. I did also let him know that I didn't support paying for the whole thing. So I, somewhere in the report that this we're gonna get from staff, and I'd like Anthony to work with staff to come back with some uh, way of paying for this, um, I, I, like I say, I support it. Um, uh, supported the, the lowering of the flag. I also supported the, uh, when somebody else approaches about painting a mural and we, we all voted for it, uh, for her to do that. But, and we also talked, talk, spoke about the upkeep. So I know this is going to cost us some money and the upkeep is going to cost some money. So I'd really like to see in the report and from Anthony, uh, some of the uh, questions raised by Councillor Longo about the uh, the uh, money situation with it. Thank you. That's it. Okay, I got Councillor Sentence now. Yeah, thank you. Do you, you want to move for a staff uh, report? Like make... Oh, do you want to move for a staff report? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that Council refer the consideration of the Pride Crosswalk to the Director of Public Works and Community Services. And that the following discussion with the BIA and a report be brought back to council for consideration. OK, 
Okay, uh, Councillor Longo, would you second that? Yeah, okay, Councillor Longo. Um, now, we've had a little discussion, if we want to add to that, um, and that discussion included looking at other options, and Councillor Longo brought that up. Um, so, and then, Anthony, you're going to look at funding opportunities, correct? Uh, yes, I will be looking at uh, more potential private funding above and beyond uh, what above and beyond the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority. You can leave that with me, yeah. Um, and hopefully, we can work on some stuff and get uh, and get that done. Uh, is it okay if I ask a quick question of the of the council, Mr. Mayor? Yes, you can absolutely. Um, I didn't go public with this uh, on social media, um, and one of the reasons was I didn't want anybody on council to feel that I was trying to apply pressure or get people riled up about it. That's not how I want to do this business. I'd rather do it with cooperation and with everybody working together and having their own inputs. Would would the would the council be fine with me making a, a post on social media that I pitched this to council and it maybe and it's going to be moved for a staff report? Uh, once it's passed, if that recommendation's passed by by this council then by all means it's public uh, information and you can do that absolutely anthony okay, thank you okay um so go ahead councillor kenny councillor kenny uh, oh. did you want to speak or is your screen just frozen yes i'm trying I, I'm, I'm trying to unmute myself before i speak um I'd like to make a friendly amendment to Councillor Senton's uh, um, motion to, to, say, to include Anthony, uh, to include, to say that Anthony will, will uh, work and, and help staff and uh, work with them on, on the uh, fundraising part of it. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Because he, he said he, cause, because he said he wanted to work with them, so let's make it part of the amendment. Or part of the, the motion. Okay. Yep, that's fine. The clerk said that we can add that. Okay. And then we're also going to look not only in the downtown because Councillor Longo brought up, let's explore uh, if, uh, if there might be somewhere else. So uh, I think we want to be open and make sure that uh, we explore all options with this. Is everybody good with that? Okay, so if... Uh, can you do you want to read that i'll let the clerk read that and then we'll uh if everybody's ready we'll uh, vote on that so through the mayor to members of council the motion was that council refer the consideration of a pride sidewalk to the director of public works and community services <clears throat> and that following discussion with the bia a report be brought back to council for consideration and that mr fiore assist staff with providing some options for funding opportunities and uh, and that um, well this the uh, locations that uh, that the public works and community services look at all location options okay okay so is everybody good with that we're going to look at all location options and we're going to have anthony um, work in conjunction with staff on the uh, on the fundraising side or the funding opportunity okay is there any further discussion on this all those in favor opposed that is carried Anthony I want to thank you for the presentation it was excellent and the next steps moving forward we uh, look forward to working with you and your input as well as with our staff and uh once again, thanks for coming to council. Thank you for having me and uh, thank you very much for uh, all of your support. Uh, stay safe and hopefully this is the last of your Zoom meetings and you can get back to normal. Well, I can't wait till we can get everybody in the council chamber for sure. Thank you. Right. Take care guys, thank you. Okay, so we move now on to um, motions for council support. Uh, moved by Councillor Neal, seconded by Councillor Sentence, and I'll turn this over to Councillor Neal. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And I'll just give some background. Uh, the Battle of Beechwood or Beaver Dams was fought over this land. There is a diagram of the battle at this site also. 
the indigenous soldiers fought and won the battle across this key piece of land. The battle prevented the Americans from regaining possession of the Niagara Peninsula and we becoming Americans. The northeast corner of this site had the Toll House, the southeast corner had the Bishop Fuller House, and the southwest corner had the Davis House. And of course, the northeast corner has the memorial flags, flags and the stone giving some information on the battle. A plaque with a diagram depicting the actual battle, a plaque describing the history of the Toll House, a plaque describing the history of the Bishop Fuller House. Thorold is known for its, this battle, so this park would describe the actual battle. We would have the indigenous people help with the writing on the plaques and be part of the de dedication of the park as part of their history. This would be another part of Thorold's important role in the War of 1812. I, I will move that council accept an area of approximately 877 square meters as parcel payment for parkland dedication under the Planning Act for the expansion of the Battle of Beaver Dance Park at Old Stone Road and Davis Road and that staff be directed to include the expansion into the capital budget deliberations for 2022 budget. And it was seconded by Councillor Sentence. Anyone have any questions or discussion on that? Go ahead, Councillor Longo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to Councillor Neal, if, if I could, I'm just a little confused at what you're asking for here. So we're looking to the 877 square meters. Where's that located? Out at Davis Road? It's a corner of Davis Road and Old Stone Road. If you okay. know where the plaques and the flags are flying out in that corner, if you, if you expand it out from there, that's the park. Yeah. That's the section where, where I'm asking that it be dedicated for that particular purpose. Okay, because it says for the expansion of Battle of Beaver Dams Park. But the yeah, Battle of Beaver and, Dams and, Park is downtown. Well, that's debatable, but um, <laughs> the, 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 the battle site, I'll call it the battle site instead of the Battle of Beaver Dams Park. Okay, uh, th that's what confused me, I'm sorry. And, and one other question, if I could, Mr. Mayor. Yes, so go ahead. So this is partial payment of parkland dedication from the developer of that land in on the other side of the canal? That's correct. Okay. I think and how much Long more how much more would they owe us in parkland dedication? I think Denise is on. Maybe she can answer that question. Our manager, uh, go ahead, Denise. Yep. Thanks. Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Longo. So the the owner of these lands has come forward for a consent to sever the parcel. So as part of that severance, they're required to give us two percent of the land, either in land or cash in lieu. And so that 877 square meters is not quite uh, the 2% of land. So what they'll have to do is they'll have to do an evaluation of the property and determine how much more money they have to give the city. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Any further questions, Councilor Longo? No, okay. So is that, um, should that say Battle of Beaver Dams Park or how should we word that? Uh, I, I would change it to site from from Battle of Beaver Dance Park, so there's no confusion. Okay, did we change that? Yeah, just so there be no confusion, I think that's a good point. Okay, um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Um, number two, a uh, motion for council support. I have mover, Councillor Neal, seconder, Councillor Kenny, and again, I turn it over to Councillor Neal. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Mickey DeFruche um, sent me some information and then I went and talked to him. Uh, he's one of our two representatives on the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Board and has brought forward this particular request to designate the Melsport Park as a songbird sanctuary to put up an osprey nest in the park and to, uh, and the park is also a perfect location to designate it as a dark sky area. So that is the reason why this is coming forward. Uh, basically is from Mickey DeFruche. And so therefore, uh, moved by myself, second by Councillor Kenny, that the council declare Melsworth Park as a wild bird, wild songbird sanctuary. And that council further declared the Melsworth Park as a dark sky zone. And that the council directs staff to construct an os osprey nest in the Melsworth Park. 
Um, okay, that's a motion, and then you're the mover, and I had a seconder, Councillor Kenny. Is there any speakers to that? Go ahead, Councillor Longo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Councillor Neal. Uh, sorry, Councillor Neal, but is there any cost involved in this? Um, there might be regarding the osprey nest. Other than that, there's no cost involved. Okay. And um, pardon my ignorance, but it, where is an osprey nest built? In a tree or on the ground or? It, it would be on, most likely on a post with a platform on top. Uh, that's normally how they, they, they work and it has to be out in the open so that it is not below the rest of the foliage so that the osprey will see it. Okay, and, and Mr. DeFruccio is going to direct our staff on how to do this? Uh, he, he's, he, he would like to consult on it, yes. Okay, thank you. Any further question? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Okay, and night, uh, uh, item three um, is uh, mover Councillor Kenny and a second by Councillor Ken Sentence, um, but we have to waive the procedure bylaw to allow for a motion for council support as it relates to an item of urgent nature. And you can see the motion below it, which I can give some background on if, it's, if we agree to, uh, to move this forward. It's, um, so there's a motion by Councillor Kenny, seconded by Councillor Sentence, that Council waive the procedure bylaw to allow for a motion for Council support as it relates to an urgent item of urgent nature. Are there any, um, it's a two-thirds vote required, okay. All those in favor? Councillor Deckard, are you in favor? Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, are you talking about the Thorold Town Line Road speed yes. reduction? Yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, all those in favor, and, and that's passed. So now the motion. Mover Councillor Kenny, seconded by Councillor Sentence, and I'll ask uh, Councillor Kenny to read the motion. Go ahead, Councillor. I don't have, sorry, uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I don't have the uh, the motion. Um, okay, Councillor Sentence, do you have it? Or I can read it, I've got it. Yeah, on, yeah. I have it. I was under the understanding you were gonna read it. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, moved by Councillor Kenny, seconded by Councillor Sentence. The council requests staff to ask the region to consider the following two safety measures on Thorold Town Line Road. One, install a three-way stop at Town, Thorold Town Line Road and McLeod Road and Reduce the speed limit from 80 kilometers to 60 kilometers per hour from Chick Chippewa Creek Road to Beaver Dams Road to make it equivalent to the speed reduction the region did previously on Thorold Town Line in the section between Beaver Dams Road and Thorold Stone Road. Okay, and I, I just give you a little background to this. Uh, Councillor Whalen and I have been working on this at the regional level. Um, last week, at, uh, at, uh, they brought this forward at their council meeting. The city of Niagara Falls passed this motion um, because they're 100% behind it. Um, and going back to the first piece that we got done, and that was a lot of work that we did as a city at the region, and Carmen DeRose actually brought the most uh, understatement by councillors to get the speed reduced between um, Thorold Stone Road and Beaver Dams Road. So now we just want to make sure that we get the rest of the road done and the three-way stop on the corner. Uh, McLeod is super busy now, especially with the uh, growth in South Niagara Falls and Thorold plus, you know, with the, uh, the new Costco and all that, it's a very busy area. So that's why this motion has come forward because Niagara Falls did it uh, last week. We want to get it in. But again, I open the floor to council and any questions or uh, any concerns from our council, please bring them forward. Are there any questions on this? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Okay, Mr. Motion. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Sorry, I, I voted for it. I just no, I, I got think my you. screen froze. I, my hand didn't go up on your screen. Okay. So I just want to make sure you got my vote for it. 
Councillor DeRose, I know it's near and dear to your heart, believe me. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just thought my screen froze for that moment, sorry. Okay, motion to receive and file minutes or adopt recommendation of council committees and boards. Minutes to review for information purposes. I have a, a mover, I have Councillor Longo and a seconder, Councillor DeRose that council receive and file the minutes of the committees of council local boards as presented. 12A, Heritage Thorold Lackack, 12A2, Age Friendly Committee, 12A3, Thorold Active Transportation Advisory Committee. All, any errors or omissions from anyone that's involved with these? All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Now we have a minutes to endorse recommendations. 12B1, Thorold Active Transportation Advisory Committee. I have a mover, Councillor DeRose, and a second, Councillor Neal, that the Thorold Active Transportation Advisory Committee recommend to Council that the City of Thorold participate in the Slow Down Lawn Sign Initiative with CAA Niagara. And this was the presentation we had at the last council meeting, went back to active transportation and they've made this recommendation and I'll let Councillor DeRose speak on that. Go ahead, Councillor DeRose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to get a word in edgewise also because in case for some reason, every time I've been going over, my screen freezes. So I just want to let you, I'm 100% behind this. Uh, we had another great presentation from Desiree. Uh, a, a resident uh, after the fact brought up some great points through an email to council. And uh, I, I think uh, we, I endorse it 100% and I recommend it to uh, my fellow councillors to uh, support this motion. Thank you. And thank you for your work on that committee, Councillor DeRose. Uh, Councillor Neal. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It, it, again, thank you to Councillor DeRose for doing this. When I was down visiting my daughter and son-in-law in Trenton, Ontario a couple of weeks ago, um, they have that same type of uh, sign on their lawns and it certainly makes you stop and think about how fast you're going and, and that type of thing, so great. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor DeRose. Mr. Mayor, I also want to thank, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Neal, for your kind words. I also want to thank uh, staff, Jeff, and the, and the rest of the staff for, uh, for their work on this also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. I look forward to seeing that initiative and the signs out around our community. Statement by councillors, I have Councillor DeRose up. Go ahead, Councillor DeRose. Uh, first Thank one you, Mr. is the bridges. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Yeah, I just, I, I know uh, I, I know the answer may be MTO, but I'm just wondering, so I wanted clarification on who maintains the Pine Street and Queen Street bridges. Um, I'm around there a lot. It's my old childhood neighborhood, uh, visiting my sister, a home we still have. Uh, and I bring the kids around. We walk across the Queen Street Bridge, ride the bikes. And it's just, I can't believe there's some big planters that they've let go. And uh, people have either stolen the plants or the plants have died. And it just, the visual appearance of it is not very good. And then we walked around to Pine Street and the Pine Street Bridge has got debris on the side of the road that's constantly uh, being there, like pieces of uh, cement and brick and stuff like that. So I'm just wondering if if uh, staff could tell me, uh, and if it is the MTO, can we get on them about uh, upkeeping them? And if it's us, can we please upkeep them? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, oh. the appropriate staff. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, Jeff Holman, our Director of Public Works and Community Services is here. And Jeff, do you wanna comment on that? Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Curtis Dre is also available to answer any questions. With respect to jurisdiction on Pine Street, the section between Richmond and the off-ramp is under the city's jurisdiction. The area between the ramps and over top of the, uh, over top of the Highway 58 is under MTO jurisdiction. And then the section between the on-ramp and Beaver Dams Road is under the region of Niagara jurisdiction. Uh, so it is kind of confusing, uh, and uh, yeah, I, having driven through that a couple of times recently, there are uh, there is a need for a, a more attention there. With respect to the Queen Street um, Bridge, the bridge is uh, currently 
uh, under the jurisdiction of the MTO. However, the responsibility for maintenance has been transferred to the city. The planters were put there to block ATVs and uh, vehicular traffic across the bridge because of some structural deficiencies, but it's still used actively by the uh, by pedestrians and cyclists from time to time. The planters have, uh, have been neglected, no doubt about it. In fact, uh, one of the things that we cut back on due to the pandemic was uh, our beautification efforts. Um, and I know that our staff has uh, got it back on the radar screen. Uh, I think they were out there earlier today, um, but we need to spend more time and more effort to, to address that area up. So thanks very much, Councillor, for bringing it to our attention and uh, we'll keep a closer eye on those areas. Thank you, Councilor Thank you, Jeff. On Thank that. you very and, much. And Jeff, can, if there's uh, issues um, that's not under our jurisdiction, can uh, uh, we maybe fire off a letter to them and uh, with uh, some of the concerns that were raised? Would that be a good idea? Yes, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. That's, uh, that's something we'll have to look into right away. Thank you. Okay, Councillor, is that fine? Are you good with that? Uh, yes, that, that great, great answer, Jeff, and uh, thanks, Mayor, for your support. Thank you. Councillor, you're up with um, um, condition of Martin Street Park. So another, uh, my old uh, haunt, haunt or stomping grounds growing up, we played there daily, and um, it, just, it just seems uh, being there the other day with my kids, um, I, I, it just looks like it needs some tent TLC and it's just, it just seems, uh, neglected. And I, I was really surprised at the condition of the baseball diamond. I know they don't have major games there anymore, but there are practices and I feel bad for the kids that would have to practice in those conditions. So it, uh, what I'm saying, I was just going to ask, I, I didn't want anything major, but just, uh, how we can address, uh, just a minor staff report and how we can address the state of the smaller remote parks in the city that appear to be neglected. And I think they just need a little bit of TLC, but for example, at uh, Martin Street Park, there used to be trees there. And for some reason over the years, they've cut them down. So there's no shade. So we were out in the sun and we were we were having fun, but it, 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 it would be nice if they, over the years, just try to keep it up and maybe uh, add it to more things to make it a, 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 a preferred anemone for people to go there and, and, uh, and enjoy a, a city park. That, that area is growing with all the houses now at the old Exelon, and uh, there'll be more people, once they uh, see that it's there, they'll be wanting to use it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone want to speak to that, Jeff or, or uh, Curtis? Perhaps Curtis can bring, uh, uh, bring up to speed on the plan. Uh, was there a directive there? Was there a council resolution to bring a report? because we could save some time if we, um, if you'd rather have it in a report form as opposed to a verbal response. Is that good, Councillor Durant? I'll, I'll, I'll follow your advice, Jeff. Your, your expertise is invaluable in situations like this. Well, thank you, uh, Councillor, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Perhaps Curtis can give you an idea as to what the schedule is for maintenance and, and if you can give us further direction on how you'd like to proceed, that would be great. Go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. So um, basically, uh, Councillor, the, the process right now is that we do uh, focus on some primary areas, uh, which would be Lock 7, Memorial Park, City Hall. Uh, those are sort of the key focus areas when you're coming to the road. So those would be the primary routes and then the smaller parks. That sort of idea would be secondary routes that we do address, but I'm happy to bring a report back to, to Council and uh, make recommendations on how we uh, bring those up to a, a better standard for sure. So we're, uh, Councillor, you got a mo you want to make a motion to get a staff report and uh, do I need a seconder? Um, a staff report on, uh, on that issue. Um, and uh, I need a second. Are you want to, uh, is that good? You want to bring a staff report? Yeah, yeah, Councillor that, that's perfect, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Can I get a seconder? Councillor Decker. Okay. Speakers to that. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so now I move on to um, Councillor Neal. Did you have something? 
I, I take, I'm taking it off the agenda because I got an answer from LACAC regarding it. So that's, that's okay. Key. So you're, you're off and I get cancer sentence. Is there one or two items cancer sentence? One item. Okay. Go ahead. One. You're, you're up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would just like to, uh, ask for a staff report, uh, to be brought back to us, uh, from the appropriate staff, uh, members. Um, on the feasibility of now that we're doing Beaver Dams Park and it's going to be done and have a new, you know, paved driveway and parking lot that uh, we look into for next year. Obviously, this year it's being redone to have uh, the feasibility of having a farmer's market come into there. Now, I know Small Scale Farms does theirs 11 o'clock on Saturdays. I don't want to interfere with them. But uh, maybe they could, uh, if we did it during the week or a different day, they could also take advantage of uh, one that we're having downtown. I, a lot of people ask me about a farmer's market in Thorold, so I thought maybe we could uh, start taking a look at it for next year. So I'd like to uh, ask for a staff report on the feasibility of that. Okay, and uh, do, are you seconding that, Councillor Neal? Uh, yes, I am. And you do want to speak to it? Uh, yeah, just a quick uh, comment is that we did have a farmer's market at one time and it did work well for about five or six years. And then because of circumstances, it, it went by the wayside. But I think we do need a farmer's market in Thorold and, and I'm glad Councillor sent brought this forward for a report. Okay. Is there anyone else want to speak to that? Go ahead, Councillor Durham. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Sentence, great endeavor. Uh, I spoke to staff, we talked about it last year. And as you said, people are approaching us and and uh, extolling the benefits of doing this. And um, um, I, the, the thing that held us back last year was COVID. And as we were coming out of it, I think the timing is perfect for setting up for next year. So I will support it 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Councillor DeRose. Anyone else? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Okay, thank you. Um, delegations to report. So now up next, we have Kristen McCauley, Acting Manager of Long Range Planning, Region of Niagara, to speak, uh, it, that's to PDS 2021-24. Um, is, is Kristen there? Okay, welcome Kristen, you have, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. There we go. Can you see my screen okay? Yep. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Um, my name is Kirsten McCauley, and I am here tonight to present the Brock District Placemaking Manual. I'm also here with my colleague, Kaldun Ahmad, who is the manager of Urban Design, and who will be available to answer questions after the, um, the presentation. So the Brock District uh, Placemaking Manual was prepared in collaboration with staff from the City of Thorold, the City of St. Catharines, Brock University, and Niagara Region. And it is a, a project that is um, directly coming out of the Brock District Plan. So the Brock District Plan, um, I'll just do a little bit of a, a backgrounder on, on the district plan itself um, for those who aren't um, as familiar with it. The district plan boundary includes um, the Niagara Escarpment to the north, the 406 to the um, east, the uh, Dequeue Road to the south, and Lake Moody to the west. It includes Niagara Region Headquarters, Thorold City Hall, and Brock University. And the Brock District Plan was um, undertaken in 2015-2016. Uh, it was also done collaboratively with um, the City of Thorold, the City of St. Catharines, uh, Brock University, and the region. And the purpose of the district plan was to create a shared vision and um, look for ways that we could uh, collaborate and coordinate efforts within the Brock area. And the shared vision is to transition the area from a low density employment area to a higher density mixed use complete community. The plan was endorsed by 
um, uh, the local councils, the board, Brock Board of Trustees and Regional Council um, towards the end of 2016, early 2017. So the purpose of a placemaking manual, um, it actually implements a number of recommendations and strategies for the Brock District Plan. It provides a consistent design aesthetic to the area and um, provides that, a design and an identifiable area recognizable destination for the Brock District. It includes direction for landscape interventions, environmental sustainability. It encourages active transportation, walkability, and um, cycling, and it uh, promotes innovative practices. One of the Brock um, District Plan's uh, key frameworks is gateways, and gateways was uh, one of the, um, the key things that we looked at through the placemaking manual. So there's three identifiable um, entrances into the Brock District. One of them is the um, entrance from the 406 uh, on either side of Sir Isaac Brockway. We've created the, um, or we've um, developed and constructed the um, placemaking or the, the gateway markers at that location. And the materials and lettering, coloring and landscaping is also seen in the other two gateway locations. The placemaking manual provi provides designs for those other two locations. One of those locations being Merrittville Highway and DQ Road as a gateway. So the north um, west corner of Merrittville Highway and DQ Road has been designed as a gateway. It has a placemaking marker that identifies Brock District. It has seating areas, um, enhanced landscaping features, and it, it ties some of those um, materials and um, plantings with the, the other gateway locations. The placemaking manual also looked at local road uh, improvements and uh, for the city of Thorold, Schmann Parkway, uh, we looked at um, consistent tree planting along um, the streetscape, a consistent sidewalk, as well as the linear park that would connect Schmann Parkway to the um, Merrittville Highway and the multi-use uh, trail that's been um, constructed along Merrittville um, Highway. The placemaking manual also looked at bus stops and parkettes for pocket parks as ways to create um, some additional seating and um, public space at these locations. They've been uh, incorporated in some of the gateway features and um, at strategic loca locations around um, the district. And they also provide um, direction and um, examples of how we can incorporate sustainability features and plantings and um, seeding within these locations. The placemaking manual looks at furniture palettes to provide a cohesive design aesthetic across the, the district. And the furniture palettes that were chosen um, are reflective of furniture that was recently uh, installed at International Plaza as well as Brock University. Uh, both palettes provide um, direction for a wood and concrete um, design aesthetic. And some of the um, elements can be also a design feature as well as functional for seating, like the pebble benches that are at International Plaza. Uh, three other things that I just wanted to touch on from the placemaking manual, wayfinding. Um, wayfinding markers around the district will provide um, assistance for active transportation users to navigate the area. There's uh, three different types or levels, I guess, of wayfinding from the information kiosk that will provide um, more information and perhaps a map to the informational blade or directional blade signs. And uh, locations for these uh, wayfinding markers have been identified in the placemaking manual. The information for those placemaking place uh, markers has yet to be determined and would be um, determined through additional consultation with the implementation team, as well as coordination with um, the, the Canada Summer Games events and other um, events throughout the district. Green infrastructure is also included in the placemaking manual and provides direction for where um, low impact development facilities and installations can be incorporated into design and um, redevelopment of uh, properties. You can see at International Plaza, we've incorporated some of these uh, low impact development features in the bioswales and rain gardens. And finally, the public art um, element of placemaking. 
which contributes to, uh, as well to the identifiable location of the Brock District. Uh, some locations, potential locations have been located through the placemaking manual and direction for um, sculptures, murals, uh, enhanced crosswalks and uh, utility uh, covers are uh, provided within the, the manual. The actual location and the final determination on the, the type of public art would be done um, through a future process with uh, the local municipality as well as any arts councils and uh, through a call for artists. So I'm here tonight to um, ask for endorsement of the, the placemaking manual as a commitment to the design um, and uh, aesthetic for the Brock District. There is some more work to be done with the implementation uh, team in terms of looking at how we can fund this over time, uh, phasing and budget requirements, looking at opportunities for additional uh, funding, uh, either through uh, grants and incentives at the uh, other levels of government, as well as coordination and, and agreements with um, some various stakeholders within the, uh, the district plan area. There's also going to be continued collaboration with um, the scoped implementation committee, as well as the larger technical advisory committee um, of the Brock district plan and um, the Canada summer games organization to see how we can coordinate efforts um, within the district. So I do appreciate the time tonight and the um, opportunity to present this information to you and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Um, can we get back to our main screen and then I'll open up for questions. And uh, I seen uh, Councillor DeRose had his hand up. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, very informative uh, presentation. Kristen, is there a time frame on that? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, there isn't a time frame on um, considered just yet for the implementation, it's going to be something that happens over time and um, considered through uh, budgets and um, projects within the study area. So it's not meant to be implemented all at once, but it's meant to be implemented over time and through consideration um, with, for the various projects in the area. Thank you. Do you have a cost associated with this yet at this point? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we do not have a cost associated with um, each element. Um, there is some information at the um, end of the placemaking manual that provides some estimates, but we would have to go through um, the process of the final design drawings and and um, getting some exact quotes. Uh, again, it would be an implementation plan that we would work through um, with a team of stakeholders to determine how we roll out the uh, implementation of this and, and the actual project. Thank you. And finally, um, what are are you? So basically, are, what are you asking of Thorold residents? Are you asking for financial support to make this come or become a reality? Is is that what what's what you're asking for? Or can you be specific, please? Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm asking for endorsement. Um, for the commitment to the design direction for the Brock District. So the commitment to the placemaking manual that over time it, it would be considered through um, redevelopment projects or projects uh, for say streetscaping, um, the, the implementation of the gateway to um, ensure that the Brock District becomes that recognizable destination. Thank you. Councillor Neal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through to Kirsten. Um, I, I noticed maybe I'm missing something, but I do not notice a bus stop in front of the Canada Games Center on Maryville Highway. And the same thing with the new roadway that's going through the, the Canada Games area. There is nothing on the diagram, at least, that states that there would be a bus stop on that particular road in front of the Canada Games uh, complex. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I believe the, the bus stops locations are the current bus stop locations. Um, if we were to look at new bus stop locations, those could be added in the direction of the placemaking manual would apply. Well, I would suggest you do it because there's a lot of people who will be utilizing that Canada Games, which has nothing to do with Brock University or, or such. And uh, uh, the, the closest bus stop would be probably a block or two away from 
from the facilities. And I think there should be one right in front of the facilities. So just my just my uh, comments on that. The second one is that we had uh, the Laura Secord group make a presentation to the city of Thorold regarding a heritage walkway. And the heritage walkway, uh, I'll probably almost half of it goes through uh, your particular district plan. And I didn't notice anything on your district plan regarding it. So, so what I'm going to suggest that that Carol McCormick, who's president, uh, send you the information to add it into the plan. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you for that information. I have been in contact actually on a separate project with Carolyn McCormick, so I would be interested in that information. And um, that is something that we could include in terms of the public art piece um, or the wayfinding markers. Uh, there's a, a number of ways that we could incorporate that information. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, Councillor Longo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to the presenter, um, Kirsten. You speak of stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders that will be responsible for funding these projects? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I would refer to the, um, the local municipalities, the region and Brock University. Um, that would be the stakeholder group that would be, um, or the implementation team that would be looking at ways that we can or incorporate and um, implement the, the, the place making manual in the direction of that. Um, there could also be opportunities for uh, funding, um, budget, or sorry, grants and incentives um, that could be uh, accessed for some of this, this work as well. Um, there's also the PRIP um, regional program that perhaps Mr. Ahmad could speak further to for any um, improvements along regional roads. Um, who was going to speak to that, Caldo? I can speak to that uh, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the the as uh, essentially the uh, Niagara Region has a uh, public realm investment program that's um, in uh, partnership with the local uh, municipalities provides uh, grant funding for for enhancements of the public realms along the regional road. So so that's. Um, uh, that would be a source, uh, for instance, that, that could be used for, for these enhancements here. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I guess my, my, I guess the question is, we aren't committing to funding tonight, but are we committing to being an equal funder of a project like that, considering the size of Thorold compared to the other partners? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe what I'm asking, well, what I'm asking for tonight is for the commitment to the placemaking manual. Um, it, depending on the project, depending on the location, obviously, um, the Thorold wouldn't be looking at funding something in the city of St. Catharines portion of the Brock District. So we would be looking for um, partnership and um, commitment for the, the pieces that would be within the Thorold area and looking at opportunities for um, for funding and for coordinating with the other projects that could incorporate some of these features as well um, through that um, through that process. Okay, so if I could just ask one more question. So you're looking for us to commit to the um, concept, but we aren't committing to the budget portion um, because that would be, we would determine that through our budget deliberations at City Hall. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. And so we would come back at a future date with uh, an implementation plan for um, City Council to, to view and consider. Thank you. Okay, any further questions? Seeing none, I want to thank you for your presentation, Kristen and Caldoun. And uh, do we want to bring that report forward right now while they're here? Um, can I get a motion to bring PDS 2021-24 forward? Can I get a motion to do that? Councillor Neal, can I get a second or Councillor Sentence? All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So are you for it, Councillor DeRose? No, Mr. Mayor, I'm not. Uh, bringing Thank the you. report forward. 
Okay. I'm sorry. We're just to bring the report forward. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm still against it. Thank you. Okay, that's passed. Um, okay, so we're going to bring the report forward, and that is. PDS 2021-24, Mover Councillor Kenny, Seconder Councillor Neil, and uh, who's here from planning? Brent, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So as Kirsten had discussed, this report is um, in relation to the Brock District, District Plan, the place making manual that um, implements the Brock District Plan. Um, so this manual just um, provides a variety of projects, potential projects, and, um, and things that could go on within the, the district to implement the, the plan. Um, and planning and development services are um, recommending that the report be endorsed. So that planning and development services be received for information and that the report be endorsed, correct? Yes, thank you. Okay, that's a motion on the floor. Speakers to it. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Okay, thanks again. Thank you for your presentation and uh, we look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Good night. Okay, up next I have Uh, delegation, Kevin Straband, Executive Director, Lincoln County Humane Society, to speak to CC 2021-34. And uh, is Kevin there? I am here. Kevin, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Hold on, I can probably change that. Okay, we there got we go. you. Yep, I got you. Go ahead, Kevin. Thank you for... So I'm here... Thank you for having me, Mr. Mayor. I'm here to answer questions about the uh, uh, some concerns over pit bulls in the municipality and perhaps speak to the bylaw if there are specific questions to that. Okay, so we can bring that uh, report forward. I need a motion to bring CC 2021-34 forward. I got Councillor Longo and the seconder, Councillor DeRose. All those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. So now we'll bring the report forward, and that is a mover councillor sentence, and I've got a seconder, Councillor Longo, and uh, I'll turn that over to our, our clerk, Joanne. Hi, go ahead, Joanne. Through the mayor to members of council, so the information with regards to this report is relating to the original request from Councillor DeRose at the June 1st meeting. So really, it's just to uh, receive the report for information. And as Kevin had mentioned, he'd be here to answer any questions. Um, so yeah, if there's any questions, they can be directed through either myself or Mr. Stuband. Okay, so you've uh, everybody's had a chance to read uh, the report. And I open the floor for questions. Go ahead, Councillor DeRose. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, th thank you, Kevin, for attending. And thanks for the... Uh, time you've given me in our conversations over the phone. I really appreciate it. Kevin, just a uh, couple quick questions. Um, if there is a dangerous dog issue within our city limits, who should they call first? Because a lot of residents are confused, as I am too. Who would be the, 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 the best uh, person to call immediately? Well, or for you, Mr. Mayor. So thank you for that call, Councillor DeRose. Uh, I, I would suggest that you call the Humane Society, but it depends on what's going on. If it's truly a public safety concern, then people need to call 911. There's no hesitating, call the police, call emergency services, and then call the Humane Society, because we are going to investigate, we're going to use the bylaw, potentially the Dog Owners Liability Act, but for public safety, it's definitely gonna be emergency services. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and. Kevin, uh, are, are pit bulls or dangerous dogs? Are they to be muzzled on their own property? Well, you know, it, it's, so yes, any dangerous dog under the thorough bylaw needs to be muzzled on its own property. 
Uh, and that includes pit bulls or anything, any type of animal that bites a person or another animal, and that's deemed dangerous by our officers. So in, not in all jurisdictions is it that way. I think that it's, it's good to have it that way because it protects people from a dog that's already shown to cause issues in a municipality and bite a resident or a, a resident's animal. So I think that that, that that is in existence and I think that's a good thing in the bylaw. And I think there are enough provisions in the Thorold bylaw to deal with dangerous dogs in the municipality and to protect the residents as best as possible. But of course, understanding that any bylaw investigation is always going to be reactive uh, from the enforcement perspective that's what enforcement is although we can certainly patrol and it lets people see that we're out there and oh yes i better keep a close eye on my dog and you know that's kind of the proactive part but uh it's sorry the i'm not sure i said proactive but i meant it's reactive um enforcement's always reactive because we're responding to a complaint so uh, if i called bylaw about a pit bull that I was worried about. Do they contact you or is it my responsibility to contact you guys also? You can certainly contact bylaw or us. There, there's certainly that sharing of information. So they will let us know. And, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that that happens in short order uh, because they know who performs that service for the municipality, but you can also call us directly. And, and I don't think there would be any real delay. So if somebody's watching and they're unsure of who to call, Put it in either way and we will still get that information okay thank you and just one last question kevin um and not to pick on pit bulls but my i've had bad experiences with them and as people that have contacted me how are how is it that we're still allowing pit bulls when they've been banned by the provincial government since over 10 years ago i think i can't remember the year but um i don't understand how they still we still allow them in the community well, you're right, and that while that shouldn't happen, you know, laws get broken all the time. Uh, the other part of that is the dogs that people are seeing might not actually be pit bulls. So they might think it's a pit bull. We had two Weimaraners that were running in St. Catharines and somebody thought they were pit bulls. So it might be a public education piece too, but we can determine that we ask for proof when we see that type of dog running or, or any dealings we have with them, but then, what the province did was they downloaded that piece to municipalities and said that they would be responsible for enforcing the Dog Owners Liability Act. Now, in the city of Thorold and through our contract, we don't have an agreement for Dog Owners Liability Act cases, but we've had one in the past, and I spoke with city staff, and they approved an investigation that can be pretty lengthy and involves getting a warrant and seizing a dog. So we had the funds. Uh, that the city had authorized for us to do that over and above the contract but ultimately that dog disappeared we don't know where it went the person never got in touch with us and that investigation never happened but i think it's it, it should be reassuring to counselors and to residents and and other staff as well to know that we are still that option for the dog owners liability act cases if they arise and when those arise is really when there's a bite that's quite significant if it's something that you know, this dog is a public threat, not just a one-off where something happened even by accident, but if it's truly a public threat, then we'll use the, the authority and the law that's available to us to make sure that that dog is removed from the community so it's not a future threat. Thank you, Kevin, I appreciate it. Any, Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? opposed that is carried and kevin thank you for coming and uh answering questions and we appreciate that and uh, thank you mr mayor thank you okay now we're on to consent reports i have a mover councillor longo and a second uh second or councillor decker that council approved the following consent report and um I got 15 A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, do we want to pull any of these reports or are we taking them as a whole? Go ahead, Councillor DeRose. Can't hear you, Councillor. 
through you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a question about deed to staff. Uh, so we can, can we pull that one, please? Yeah. The, the, the arena painting project, thank you. you. Uh, do you have a question regarding that report you want to yeah. ask? Yes. Yeah, can I ask it? Yeah, go ahead. 15D PWCS 2021-68. Okay. Uh, Jeff, are you there? Curtis. Or Curtis, one of them. Uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. I just wasn't clear if the 8,281 is in addition to the 20,000 that was in the budget for it or if it's uh, part of it. It's, it's if, if it still comes under the budget, what was approved by our, our budget. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, it would be included in the $20,000 that was originally approved in the capital process. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else thank that you. wants to pull a report? Go ahead, Councillor Kenny. Um, I haven't got the, uh, I can't pull up the agenda on my, on my phone here. Uh, PWCS 2021-62. Uh, yeah, and that's the, uh, the uh, tree and uh, bench policy. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Curtis is here if you have a question. And Jeff? Oh, I, I got more than a question. I got a I got a, uh, an issue with something in the report I want to ask. Um, the renewal. Um, I think, I don't know if any, anybody else, um, how they feel about it, but after 15 year term, these, these benches that people are purchasing for $4,000, the applicant will have the option to renew an additional 15 years at the current cost of a new bench. Like these, these benches, they last 30 years. Why are we gonna go after somebody to pay another $4,000? Like if, if the bench is still good, why would, um, that, that's part of it. And the other part of it is a lot of older people are buying benches for their, for, say for their parents, they might be 60 years old. So 15 years from now, they might not even be alive. So what, like these benches might still be in great shape. Or is the city gonna go after, the family for another four thousand dollars, and if they don't pay it, change the change the plaque on it, or what's it? That's all it says in the report. So I'm wondering what what we're what our stance is on that. Okay, and I'll turn that over to I guess our uh, manager of uh, community services, Curtis. Go ahead. Yeah. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Councillor Kenny. Uh, so the intention here is if the bench is in need of repair or replacement at that point they can look to replace it at the full cost of the bench however we're not we're not going to go out and look to remove these benches there's no reason to do so uh it's basically if it's in a state of bad repair and we need to look to replace this bench we're going to give the option to that individual to replace it at that point uh, but the city won't be responsible beyond 15 years to cover that cost basically is what it's saying but again we're not going to be looking to remove these from their location we're not going to pull one out of the mausoleum, for example, if it's in good condition and we're not gonna take the plaque off. So in other words, if somebody purchases a bench and it's there for 30 years and it's still in top, top quality shape, it'll sit there and the, and the person and then the family will not be asked to pay another $4,000. Is that correct? Three that's Mr. Not Mayor, that yeah, that, that is correct what you're saying. That's, that's the plan. Because in, in the renewal it says, and this is a quote from it, after the initial 15 year term is completed, the applicant will have the option to renew for an additional 15 years at the current cost of a new bench. That's what it says in the, in the, in our policy. That sounds like you're gonna, or we're gonna ask for another payment. I think we should either reword that or um, take it out. Or yeah, I think we should reword it if, to say after 15 years, if the bench is still in good shape, it'll stay there without no cost to the family. 
uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe in the report, I'm just going to open it up that it does actually state what I, I stated prior, previously that uh, we won't be looking to remove these unless they're in a state of bad repair. So I can see if I can find that quickly. No, that's that I agree, Curtis. That is in there. It is in the report that that you're not going to be looking to. It's just that one paragraph for renewal. That's I, I don't know why that's it. I mean, it's the seven page or 10 page report. It's great. It's just three lines in there that I don't understand why it's in there. The renewal on page two. Um, I don't know. I'll ask other counselors what you like. Did do you want to respond to that, Curtis? Um, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, if I could, um, I think the council raises a, a good point of language there. The intent obviously isn't to, uh, you know, start taking these down after 15 years. It's only if the family were to approach the city and ask, we'll put a bench in, in which case the renewal uh, clause would kick into play. Um, perhaps uh, we could take that back and, and modify the language to uh, just to clarify that uh, uh, more specifically. So, um, can you, um, uh, do you want to refer this back and then bring it back? Uh, just fine tune that language. How do you want to do this, uh, Jeff? Um, well, if you, um, if, you, if the council wants to see the exact language, that's one thing. If you, uh, are comfortable with us amending the language to match the intent that we've tried to explain here, then perhaps the uh, the recommendation could be amended to say uh, the policy be adopted as amended. Okay. Um, I got uh, um, Councillor Decker and then Councillor DeRose. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a question on the bench replacement. So if somebody purchases a bench and puts a plaque on it and it say down the road, it needs to be replaced. If they don't want to pay for it, can then somebody else pay for a new bench and put a plaque on it? I'm, I'm confused with that part. Or, or does it just stay? I'm I'm just confused with it. I'm not understanding this part of the um, replacement. Okay, so through you, Mr. Mayor, to the councillor, are you referencing at the end of the 15-year term would we pull out a bench and replace it with a new bench if somebody requested? Yes. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, no, we would not unless the bench is in state of poor repair and it needed to be replaced. At that point, we would give the original purchaser the option to replace it or go with the new residence request. Okay, thank you. Councillor DeRose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I think I agree with Councillor Kenny. Um, and I think if, if you can just change the wording to what Curtis just said, state of disrepair. So I, I, if it lasts 30 years, then that it lasts 30 years if it lasts 35 40 years it lasts that long and the only time i think we should be uh returning to the uh the um promoter or the provider of the of the uh memorial is if it's in a state of disarray that's the, in my opinion thank you anyone else so um are you comfortable uh and again i'm asking council if you're comfortable that uh, to pass this tonight and allow them to amend that. Is that the way you want to go? Or would you rather refer this back uh, and have the whole report come back? So I hope. Does anyone want to speak? Uh, well, um, I, I, I would put it to Curtis is, uh, is there a rush on this? If, if they're like, a, a, we're we're actually following through with the policy right now as it as it is and we're um so as long as we're doing what the policy says to, to for the actual policy to be passed 
there, there, I don't think there's any rush. So we could, we could bring it back and vote on a next meeting, right? Because until the next meeting, we're going to follow through with what the policy says anyway. That's just my view. If everybody wants to pass it, that's fine. I think that's the best way. Can I get uh, someone that hasn't spoke to it? Can uh, someone that hasn't spoke, Councillor Longo, ask to uh, refer it to um, or defer? You, it, would it be a referral or deferral? Or defer. One or the other. Yeah. Refer it back to staff to bring back next meeting. And uh, Councillor Longo, you're going to. You're going to bring that. I, uh, Councillor Longo's motion. I need a seconder. Someone, uh, I got Councillor Neal. There's no debate on a, on a referral. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So we'll do that. It goes back. You can uh, fine tune the language and bring it back. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so um, now the rest of the consent reports then. Um, that one's done, right? Um, I, I've got a mover, Councillor Longo, and a seconder, Councillor Decker, that Council approved the following consent reports, 15A, 15B, 15D, and 15E. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay. So we're going to go in, before we go into uh, our closed session, uh, we'll pass the two bylaws um, other than the uh, one to adapt, confirm, and uh, ratify matters dealt with council. So first reading of bylaws, I have a mover, Councillor Longo, and a seconder, Councillor Sentence, that leave be given to introduce the following bylaws. Bylaw 82-2021 and Bylaw 84-2021. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Final reading of the bylaws. Moved by, again, moved by Councillor Longo, seconded by Councillor Sentence. That the bylaws just read a first time, be read a second and third time, and do pass, and that the mayor and clerk do sign and seal the same. Any rule to this council to the contrary, notwithstanding, all those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, are we doing notices of motion? Oh, I'm not? sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm. We will do, yep, we'll do notice of motion before we go into closed session. Go ahead, Councillor Senton. Sorry about that. Yeah, hi, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I'd like to put a, bring, a, bring forward a notice of motion to the August 10th meeting to declare 2022 as a, as, a year, as a year of the garden to celebrate the contributions of gardens and gardening in our, to our development of our community. With other municipalities across the region and in Ontario, the Saturday prior to Father's Day in 2022 will be recognized as Garden Day. More information is included in the clerk's correspondence report and we'll speak to it more on August 10th. Excellent. So you'll bring that report and work with the clerk. I think we should also include, uh, get some uh, uh, contact with their Thorold Garden Club, the horticultural group. and. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we look forward to that next council meeting. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna go into closed session. Um, let me see here, I gotta get this, okay. Okay, I got a mover. Mover, Councillor DeRose, and a seconder, Councillor Decker, that Council move into closed session at, at this time to discuss matters subject to solicitor client privilege and matters about identifiable individuals subject Thorold Nonprofit Municipal Housing Corporation. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, so we'll go out and now they have to go in under the, um, yeah, the uh, solicitor, what? 
So there's another one. There's uh, there is one the total non-profit housing, and there is another one uh, the potential disposal of land. Excuse me, we got to go back. I missed something. It's not in my notes here. Where is it? Is it in? No, that was my fault. It's the potential disposition of land. Okay, so I'm gonna, we missed one item, so I'm, I'm gonna go back. I gotta move her Councillor DeRose, second it Councillor Decker, that council move into closed session at this time to discuss matters subject to solicitor client privilege and matters about identifiable individuals, thorough nonprofit municipal housing corporation and potential disposition of land. Okay, that's the second one, okay? All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Okay. So you'll have to log out and then log in under the closed session.